Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you joining and logging on today on short notice. I'm Chris Berger. I'm the Vice President of Enterprise Communication for Atrium Health, and today is a very exciting day, as you'll learn about in just a few moments. Because of our social distancing efforts, we're really holding this informational meeting right now via video conference call, and we recognize that isn't the same as a live event. Please note that each one of our presenters are in a COVID safe environment. They will not be wearing a face mask to ensure that everyone can hear them clearly. We're simultaneously recording this event. So if there is someone or uh, something that you weren't able to capture, the entirety of the news conference will be posted later today at bestcareforall.com. Because of the number of Zoom feeds that are required for this event, there also will not be an opportunity to directly ask the speaker questions. For the members of the media in attendance, please submit your questions to media at atriumhealth.org, and I will read as many as time will allow for our presenters at the end of the event. Again, that's media at atriumhealth.org. Now, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce our speakers today. Mr. Gene Woods, President and CEO of Atrium Health. Dr. Julianne Fleischlag, CEO of Wake Forest Baptist Health and Dean of Wake Forest School of Medicine. And Dr. Nathan Hatch, Wake Forest University President. So without further ado, we'll first hear from Mr. Woods. Great, thank you, Chris. Uh, and good morning, everyone. We're delighted to have you here uh, with us today uh, in this uh, wonderful, extraordinary celebration that we're about to have. Uh, this has been quite the milestone week for Atrium Health in so many ways. Uh, just this past Wednesday, we celebrated our 80th Atrium Health birthday with teammates, patients, family, and neighbors. And during the festivities, we paused for a moment to reflect how we have grown through the years as an organization and really how we've grown as a community. From rising through the ashes of the Great Depression at Charlotte Memorial Hospital back in 1940 to becoming one of the nation's leading healthcare systems. We've carried the legacy of our founders in ways that I think they would be very proud of if they were here on an occasion such as this. Now, we may be less than two decades shy of our centennial, but it feels like 80 is the new 30 for us uh, around here because we are reinventing ourselves yet again and have boundless energy and enthusiasm for what lies ahead. So this week, our history books will mark another transformative milestone for us as uh, we celebrate who we become and who we're becoming. Now, for those of you that have been closely watching our announcements, these pictures here were taken back in April of 2019, which feels like an eternity ago, way before COVID was on any of our minds. This was when we announced our letter of intent to come together with Wake Forest Baptist Health and Wake Forest School of Medicine. And since then, our teams have been working on strategies and plans so that we hit day one running as we embark on this incredible journey together. So after 18 months of planning, of preparing, of waiting to hear from all the regulatory agencies, I'm very excited to share that today, we are finally becoming one enterprise, the new Atrium Health. And as we all know, it's been a year of tremendous change uh, for our families, for how we work, for how we interact with each other. And we're taking all that into account, though what we create here today is designed not just to meet this moment, but to co-create what the future of healthcare will be like, empowered by our mutual and deep commitment to life-changing care. With our com combination now complete, our vision is to transform medical education, expand patient-centered research, and define the next generation of clinical excellence. By combining our expertise in areas such as cancer, heart and vascular, children's, neurosciences, and more, all of our communities will have access to the best treatment protocols in the country. Further, here in North Carolina, for example, with more than 1,500 care sites, half of our fellow citizens will live just within miles from one of our locations, and they can receive that care at the new Atrium Health. In fact, every other second, a new patient interaction will take place in our organization. And each day, 80 babies will take their first breath at one of our hospitals. Again, everything we are doing is about providing life-changing care. 
With our combined family of 70,000 teammates working together, our goal is to leverage our respective clinical expertise and our vast research and educational capabilities to revolutionize the way people become healthy and thereby change lives for the more than 7 million people across our region. And in doing so, we will significantly extend our mission to improve health, to elevate hope, and advance healing for all for generations to come. And I can't think of a better partner to be working side by side with Dr. Freischlag as we build the new Atrium Health together. So just a couple of words about Julie before handing this off to her. Uh, first of all, she's a brilliant woman. I've gotten to know her very well over these past uh, few years. So she's not just a trusted colleague, she's become a friend. And uh, she has a uh, uh, remarkable energy, uh, which is a good thing because she wears lots of hats. Um, Julie is not only the CEO of Wake Forest Baptist Health, uh, she's the Dean of the Wake School of Medicine and President-elect of the American College of Surgeons, which is one of the most prestigious associations representing over 80,000 surgeons nationwide. And now she has the added role of being our new Chief Academic Officer of Atrium Health. Julie? Thank you, Jean. This is truly a historic day for both of our institutions. We bring together an education and research core and combine this with leading edge clinical excellence to create exciting new ways to improve health in the communities we serve. This has been our mission since Wake Forest Baptist Health began as North Carolina Baptist Hospital in 1923, and our School of Medicine was founded in 1902. We are so glad to join with Atrium Health in this exciting combination. Through our combination, we will leverage the strong foundation of our innovation quarter in Winston-Salem. With its academic and research focus, IQ is a magnet for business startups and innovative organizations looking for partners to collaborate with in healthcare innovation, product research and development, clinical trials research and healthcare innovation and technology. Additionally, the Maya Angelou Center for Health Equity is located within the innovation quarter with focus on social determinants for health and access to clinical trials for all. Currently, Wake Forest Baptist has 40 COVID-19 related clinical trials and studies underway, including an industry study sponsored COVID-19 vaccine trial. Together, now with Atrium Health, we will have the ability to grow a high tech research and healthcare innovation enterprise that will stretch from Winston-Salem to Charlotte. And the impact of our strategic combination will be far reaching elevating North Carolina as a clear destination of choice to receive medical care for people across the nation. Through our combined nationally recognized clinical centers of excellence in multiple specialties, we will expand our research in signature areas such as cancer, cardiovascular, regenerative medicine, and aging and Alzheimer's, with the goal to bring research breakthroughs to the community in less than half the time of the national average. We will also coordinate efforts to advance large multi-site patient-centered research collaborations in the prevention and treatment of high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, and vascular disease, and other conditions that affect millions of Americans. And by investing in the first of its kind translational research and population health center in Winston-Salem, we will exponentially expand access to thousands of clinical trials across the region at Atrium Health's and Wake Forest Baptist Health's hospital and clinic locations to allow patients access to new treatments not available at other healthcare institutions. And we are not stopping there. I'd like to now introduce Dr. Nathan Hatch, president of Wake Forest University. Thank you, Julie. It's indeed an honor to be here representing the students, faculty, and staff of Wake Forest University and our Wake Forest School of Medicine. Today is truly an incredible day as we at Wake Forest bring our legacy of strong medical education forward and with Atrium Health, set our sights on creating a next generation academic healthcare system. In 1902, 
Wake Forest School of Medicine was founded as a two-year program dedicated to the promise of educating, caring, highly skilled physician leaders. Today, we train nearly 1,900 students and fellows, including physicians, basic scientists, and allied clinical professionals on our Winston-Salem campus, and we are ready to grow. Just 80 miles southeast of us sits the city of Charlotte, which is currently the largest city of the nation without a four-year medical school. Given these factors, I am pleased to announce that Wake Forest Baptist Health and Wake Forest School of Medicine will officially become the academic core of Atrium Health with a second campus of the School of Medicine in Charlotte. Building upon our well-established base of medical education in Winston-Salem, the growth of the School of Medicine will expand expand existing academic research capabilities in a way that expands opportunities for clinical trials across a large, diverse market with some of the nation's leading medical experts. With this combination, we are creating the future of medical education. As the only entity with two exceptional medical schools of, schools of medicine in our region, we will become one of the largest educators of physicians and other medical professionals in the state and immediately educating over 3,500 total students across more than 100 specialized programs each year while reducing the shortage of doctors in rural and underserved urban communities. And through our combination, we will also create one of the nation's most diverse student bodies reflecting the rich diversity of the communities we serve. In more ways than one, the new Wake Forest School of Medicine in Charlotte will be a community asset, training the next generation of doctors for all of us, discovering life-saving treatments and technologies, and working every day to reduce health disparities and advance economic mobility. <laughs> Back to you, Gene. Great, thanks, Nathan. And with this vision for creating a next generation academic health system, our new Atrium Health will not only be the center of excellence for medical care, academics and research, but also a catalyst for health innovation and economic development. In fact, the new Atrium Health is uniquely positioned to create a Silicon Valley for healthcare innovation. Spanning from Winston-Salem to Charlotte, physicians, inventors, scientists and visionaries We'll be able to collaborate on new technologies, techniques, and treatments that make lives better in North Carolina, in Georgia, throughout the Southeast, and the nation. And we will attract a broad range of investors, including Fortune 100 companies, to our Innovation Center with economic and employment impact that is projected to triple in the next 20 years. Our collective vision is that we will become the desired destination hub for healthcare companies and entrepreneurs around the globe. Further, based on an independent economic analysis, the immediate direct and indirect annual impact, both economically and from a job standpoint, from the new Atrium Health will exceed $32 billion and 180,000 jobs. But as far as we are concerned, our success will only be complete by bringing life-changing care, not just to some, but for all. By combining our agenda for inclusion, such as the Wake Forest Maya Angelou Center for Equity, for Health Equity, and the social impact work being done across Atrium, we are committed to eliminating health disparities and improving the social determinants of health in all the communities that we serve. There's one thing we are reminded of this year is that we are all on this together. Martin Luther King said, whatever affects one of us directly affects all of us indirectly. So the new Atrium Health will be on the cutting edge of medicine and science, but we will also be on the cutting edge of inclusion and equity. Everyone deserves the best possible care. Where someone lives, urban or rural, or the color of someone's skin must never be a barrier to life-changing care. So what about you, Julie? What do you find most aspirational about our combination? Well, nicely said, Gene. 
Uh, what makes me enthusiastic about our combination is our opportunity to enhance our research and educational capabilities and create a lasting legacy for our learners. It is our privilege to educate and train the next generation of physicians, medical educators, mentors, researchers, and healthcare innovators so that they will chart the course to new clinical discoveries, further experiential medical learning programs, and bringing new innovations and treatments to improve the health of those in communities we serve. What an exciting journey this will be. Nathan, how about you? Thank you, Julie. For me, I think about how we'll be the only entity with two exceptional four-year medical school locations in our region. We will become one of the largest educa educators of physicians and other medical professionals in the state, immediately educating over 3,500 total students across more than 100 specialized programs each year, while reducing the shortage of doctors in rural and underserved urban communities. I look forward very much to watching how our collective efforts will build up our communities, pioneer new trails in medical education, and further the care and compassion we can offer our friends and neighbors across the state. Gene? So here we are. Uh, today is the first day of our new future together, a future that will be measured by how we make our communities better. We've laid out a fairly ambitious roadmap for reaching beyond our traditional walls and ways of doing things in order to provide life-changing care for all. We will be helping our neighbors by preventing and curing diseases and illnesses. We will cultivate and educate an entire new generation of physicians, nurses, and other medical professionals. And we will bring the collective power of our innovation capabilities to vulnerable communities, whether they be in urban or rural settings. In short, we will have an incredible foundation and proud legacy upon which to build, and we will. And it's not just us saying this. It's community leaders such as Stan Kelly. He said the game-changing nature of this combination that knits us together the clinical research assets of two powerful engines. We heard from Hugh McCall, who said, we will be the most transformative, this will be the trans most transformative initiative in the history of Charlotte. We heard from Erskine Bowles, who said, this will be one of the best investments we can make in the health of our citizens. We heard from Janet who said, our region is becoming a Silicon Valley for healthcare and opens endless opportunities for us all. We heard from Don Flo, who said, this will make it possible for us to improve health on a new scale. So it's not just saying, us saying that this is a new era of healthcare, it's our friends, our families, and community leaders, and we can't wait to get started. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woods, Dr. Fleischlag, and Dr. Hatch for sharing your thoughts with us. We now have the question and answer portion. Again, due to our setup, I'll be reading some questions today that, I've, that have been sent to us. If any other media has any questions, please send us to media at atriumhealth.org. So the first question is, uh, is about what spurred this combination and why now during COVID pandemic uh, and did that play a role? Uh, I, can, I can start and then turn it over to my colleagues. I think uh, our vision, at least in Atrium Health, uh, to become the national leader of healthcare and innovation, we believe from the start we need an academic partner. And when Julie and I sat down together a couple of years ago, uh, it, she, she had the same vision, that, that she needed a system like ours really to achieve what her vision was and, and that of the board. And so from the beginning, it just felt right. Um, now, that was 18 months ago when we signed the letter of intent. Uh, we've been actively working since then, uh, and but we think the COVID environment is it couldn't be a better time to start a new system. We've been already working, uh, as Julie said, on, on COVID trials together, and really care has changed so fundamentally that the capabilities this new organization uh, will have 
is really set up to 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 innovate a new future together. So um, we are so excited by what Wake will mean and and bring to us. And I think Julie has said and and Nathan has said that the same. So this is almost like the perfect combination of organizations coming together at the right time. And I'll echo that too. We both sort of arrived about the same time in North Carolina. We had met uh, along the way through mutual friends, but. As we looked at many years of thinking, that's why I came here of expanding ourselves and going into more parts of Western North Carolina, it made sense. And the COVID-19 crisis actually allows us to move a bit faster. We've had to solve problems quicker. We've had to move. We are using many uh, new skills. So I think now's the time that will allow us to make a second campus for the Wake Forest School of Medicine that is post-pandemic. Uh, if you've created a school before the pandemic, I think you probably are out of date. We'll be able to use our influence from here, move it down to Charlotte and have an amazing way that we can have a pandemic proof education, research and clinical uh, situation. Now, I think this is such a perfect marriage because it, it brings the tremendous clinical expertise of Atrium to the academic expertise of Wake Forest. And that, that blend can be very powerful. And I think COVID only accelerates it as we look to be a real educational innovator and expand our capacity to train doctors and other health professionals. Great. Gene, there was a question that came in. You had mentioned that we had passed all of the regulatory hurdles. And the specific question was, does that include the FTC approval? Uh, and when did that happen? Thanks. Um, the FTC, it does include the FTC uh, uh, approval, and that happened this week. Uh, so, um, so I think that was the the the, the final um, uh, test that we had to pass from a regulatory perspective. And really, what the FTC does, is, as many of you know, they, they want to make sure that the combination uh, really contributes to the purpose of, of serving the community, of, of driving synergies, of really enhancing care. So uh, we were we were happy to tell our story to the FTC. It took a little longer than, than what we might have hoped, because we were so excited 18 months ago to get started. But, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, government has a very stra strict standard for for organizations coming together as they should. Um, uh, so we were we were happy to share our story with them and they gave us their final approval this week. Great. The question came in a lot of excitement about the Met School of Medicine in, in Charlotte. And uh, one of the, of course, questions that I'm sure all of us have been asked many times, uh, has there been a decision made on the location? <laughs> 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 I'll turn this over to Julie. Um, we are we're still evaluating location. And I know the, the question that follows is, what is it going to open? And so we're still in the process of, of working through that. We've got a lot of planning underway. But Julie, you may want to highlight that and Nathan as well. Yeah, we have um, uh, Atrium has had medical students there. And therefore, starting in the spring of 2021, uh, some of our third year medical students from uh, Winston-Salem will be doing rotations. A lot of enthusiasm. Uh, for a group of students to come down there. You, so you'll start seeing students coming this year, third year and then fourth year and third years next year as we put together our application, um, as we have to do for a regional campus to the LCME, and then also uh, decide on location and what we need new in this building to sort of accommodate the new way of teaching and training uh, now that we're post COVID-19. But students will be down there and then we'll continue to grow that I'll be down there. We'll have uh, faculty uh, start working down there that are atrium uh, physicians and nurses, and we're real excited to get going uh, over the next year or two. Great. There's another question, Gene, about the benefits of combining. I think there's a lot of articles, things that have been written, you know, um, in past years about it not um, being beneficial, what would you say to those that say, why is this beneficial for North Carolina and beyond? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I think we we touched upon some of that. I think the uh, the research capabilities um, that Wake has are just incredible, 
And the, the one thing that Wake has focused on is how quickly can we get it from what, what's called the bench to the bedside? So how quickly can we find a new cure or a new treatment and really put it in the hands of the clinician so that they can put it, uh, take care of their patients? So one of the, one of the ways that, that it'll become better is this we'll now have that combined ability to really tap into the research pro- powers, power of Wake uh, combined with our own research and really be able to put uh, uh, some new treatments into the hands of our clinicians. Clinicians, as I said, the other part of it is, uh, uh, you know, the and going back to the FTC, the F, what the FTC uh, has had us, you know, do in a, in a very diligent manner is, is ensure that uh, this combination will will drive synergies, um, uh, synergies that we ultimately can pass on to consumers. So I think uh, that's a lot of the work that that's involved. Um, but beyond that, I think, you know, healthcare is going through such a transformation right now. And five years from now, it'll look completely different than it does now. And we're two organizations that we have the spirit, uh, the desire, the tenacity to really define together what healthcare will look like. And we felt from the beginning that the way to do that best is by coming together in this combination. Yeah, I would say, uh, in a sense, the, the capacity uh, to do population health, to do clinical trials, I mean, particularly across all of Western North Carolina in urban and rural communities, uh, coming together and greatly will enhance uh, the, the lives of people's health uh, on a local level. And we're both learning health systems and we're going to learn a lot from each other. Atrium has a huge telehealth p- platform that they have embarked upon even before COVID-19. And the ability, as uh, Jean mentioned, of the access for patients being within uh, minutes of us either physically or being able to contact us and being able to connect to the right provider at the right time. Where the patient is is where it's important, not necessarily where the hospital is. So that is what's going to really change the care, I think, in Western North Carolina. All right, great. One last question here. Gene, you mentioned the For All mission and how important that is. Um, and then you mentioned the new Atrium Health. Can you describe to you what this means and how you envision applying this across a broader population and a broader um, demographic and geographic area that you've talked about? Yeah, I, I kind of highlight a little bit earlier. Um, the um, Wake has a, a lot of a commitment to, to, to health inequities. Uh, and the Maya Angelou Center. They also have a, a really extensive faith network uh, that, that, that goes deep into the communities. Um, we have at Atrium, especially the COVID, demonstrated as much as anything our, our ability to really have the, uh, the data to go into communities, vulnerable communities, where there's testing disparities and other inequities and, and disparities in care. So we believe that the, the scientists that they bring, the capabilities they bring, ours together, will really allow us to take um, this uh, for all mission to the next level. I think it's been mentioned uh, a number of times in this conversation, uh, and we are extraordinarily committed uh, not just to uh, marginalized communities in urban and city uh, in the cities, but also the rural care. Julie mentioned the um, the telehealth platform that we have. So now we have a lot of atrium physicians that are uh, using the, the telehealth platform. Now we'll have other uh, talented clinicians at, at at Wake that we can tap. So if you're in a rural community or you're in in a in a community in um, in an inner city, um, you'll have access to our to our to the best care that you might get anywhere, and so I think just we're we're gonna really tap into each other's expertise to 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 expand our ability to 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 grow our for all mission. The other thing I'll just say is what we've learned from each other in these last eighteen months is our cultures are so aligned. Um, a lot of times when organizations come together, uh, you do a lot of cultural work, and every time we we've, we've met, we've come together. Our teams have. Have begun the planning process. The, the 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 feedback that comes back is it feels like we're already family. So what what gets me really excited is we're starting from a really really good place, and I, and I see us really uh, accelerating our efforts not just in for all but in innovation, medical education. Where where five years from now uh, we're going to celebrate another milestone and and uh, and be able to reflect on what a monumental day today truly uh, was. Julie, any closing thoughts? Yeah, I would just tell you our, our president, Kevin High, says it's 
absurd synergy that we have recognized between all of us, where we actually think the same, talk the same, learn from each other. Uh, many of us know each other. We have partnered with academic activities, some educational activities. I know some of the surgeons down at Atrium and have participated with them at other national meetings. So I think the, the combination is incredible. Uh, the benefits to all with the number of patients we'll touch to get our trials done. And everyone's all excited uh, to meet new people, to do it a new way, and to learn the best way to go forward. I'm so pleased that both of these cultures really seek innovation. The opportunity to start a new kind of medical school offers us a, a tabula rasa, a blank slate. And I think that's a rare opportunity. And we're just very excited about this combination. All right, that is all the time we have for questions at this time. Thank you so much, Mr. Woods. Dr. Fleischlag and Dr. Hatch for sharing your thoughts with us. It's a truly exciting time to think about where the new Atrium Health will be delivering life-changing care together through this combination. So thank you to the members of the media and as well as those watching online for taking part in this celebration of this historic occasion. Again, if there's anything you missed, we'll be posting this news conference in its entirety on bestcareforall.com later today. If you have any questions or need clarification, please reach out to me or my team in Charlotte or Paula and her team in Winston-Salem. Our contacts are at the bottom of the news release you should have received. Thank you so much and have a great day and weekend ahead.